Welcome to RPS Group of Schools online classes. This is session 2 for the chapter Transfer of Heat. In the previous session, we discussed the basics of heat transfer. In this session, we'll continue discussing the first mode of heat transfer that is conduction. Do you know how heat flows by conduction? In solids, the particles are very closely packed with little spaces between them. All particles vibrate at their fixed positions. When a solid is heated, its particles gain energy and vibrate fast. They collide with the adjacent particles and transfer their energy. So, heat is carried from one particle to another particle just like a relay race. The diagram here depicts how heat flows in solids by conduction. Figure A shows the arrangement of particles in solids. As you can see in solids, the particles are closely packed and they are not free to move. When heat is supplied to a solid, some of its particles which are near the heat source gain energy and start vibrating rapidly. Due to this vibrational motion, they collide with the adjacent particles and transfer their energy. Now these particles start vibrating and conduct the heat energy further. Now the diagram given here depicts copper wire with two ends marked A and B. Since it is a solid, particles are not free to move. They can only jiggle or vibrate. When heat is supplied to end A, it becomes warmer and its particles start vibrating fast. They collide with the other particles and transfer heat energy. The process continues till the other end, that is end B, becomes warm. This is how conduction of heat occurs in solids. Have you ever imagined whether all solids conduct heat to the same extent? Let us find out by performing an activity. The aim of the activity is to study conduction of heat through different solid substances. For this activity you will require a wooden strip, a plastic ruler, steel spoon, butter, plastic mug, three plastic beads and hot water. In order to perform the activity, take a wooden strip, a plastic ruler and a steel spoon all of the same length. Put them in a mug. Make three blobs of butter and put them at the top end of each piece. Now stick a bead to each blob as shown in the figure below. Pour some hot water into the mug and see what happens. You will observe that the butter on the metal spoon melts. This is because metal is a good conductor of heat and thus the heat flows through it. On the other hand, wood and plastic are poor conductors of heat and hence butter on them does not melt. From this activity, you will find that all the materials do not conduct heat at the same rate. Certain materials were able to conduct heat easily, while some other materials were not able to do so. Based on their ability to transfer or conduct heat, materials can be classified into two categories as good conductors of heat and poor conductors of heat. Materials which conduct heat through them easily are called conductors or good conductors of heat. 
gold silver copper aluminium iron etc are some examples of good conductors of heat materials which do not conduct heat through them easily are known as insulators or poor conductors of heat glass cotton brick wood rubber plastic air and water are some poor conductors of heat let's discuss some daily life uses of good conductors of heat metals such as steel copper aluminium are used to make cooking utensils because they easily conduct or transfer the heat from the heat source to the food being cooked the base of electric iron and the boilers used in industries are made up of metals because they are good conductors of heat now let's discuss some uses of poor conductor of heat in our daily life the handles of cooking utensils are made up of wood plastic and bakelite because they are poor conductors of heat they do not conduct much heat and prevent our hands from burning the uniform of firefighters are made up of a heavy duty poly resin fiber also called melamine which is a poor conductor of heat it prevents the uniforms from catching fire and keeps them safe materials such as styrofoam are poor conductors of heat and it is used for thermal insulation in buildings let us perform an activity to show that metals are good conductors of heat for this activity you will require a candle a match box a sheet of paper and a metal scale hold the sheet of paper at some height above the flame of the candle as shown in the figure you will see that the paper burns instantaneously Now wrap the unburnt part of the paper on a metal scale as shown in the diagram. Hold it above the candle flame at the same height. What do you see? What do you observe now? Does the paper burn at the flick of a moment as in the first case? No, the paper does not burn at the flick of a moment. This happens because the metal of the scale quickly conducts heat away from the paper preventing it from burning or we can say that the heat gained by paper is immediately transferred to the metal scale before the paper starts burning That was all for today's class thank you